I'm Reverend Jay Ragsdale from Phil Department Ministry. We're gonna stick these clothes over around that corner. Well, I've been running this ministry now for a little over 15 years. Hey, how you doing, Miss Cindy? It's good to see Pretty you. outgoing guy, just happy, just uh, love God and just love people. This is something that God just put on my heart to do. It's just my calling to do. Oh, this is good, man. One second, one more job for this. Phil Department is just uh, is an organization that me and the wife started. And it's just about helping and giving back into the community. I believe that to come together as a body of people in Christ is our biggest calling and our biggest uh, mission. So we're trying to be there to be able to help those who are less fortunate, our brothers and sisters on the streets that people tend to think or they may feel like they don't matter. So we try to be that helping to them. I love your jacket. Pilva Pot is just um, meeting the needs of the community, the less fortunate community in Utah. Did you have somewhere warm last night? You know, that's yeah. our community, our people. Love you, man. That's good stuff. No matter who you are, where you come from, to feel like you matter to somebody. I'm good. How are you? It's the most important thing in anyone's life. A little background here. My husband, many years ago, had a brother who was homeless. And when he found him many years ago, he was living in Pinehead Park. You know, he told me so many stories how bad it was out there in those streets and just barely fighting for his life. And then to see a man to come out of that, he, he was very serious about AA, very serious about just getting people off the street, making the change in people's lives, you know? I guess he, he went through it and he understood it, you know? He was one of those guys just was like a magnet. He would help anybody. It didn't matter who you were. And so we were just talking about how we can change some people's life. Because he was saying that everybody out here is not bad. There's a lot of good people out here. They just don't have any place to go. I was dragging my feet a little bit, you know, and then we sit down and we put a plan together and it just never came through, you know. I was up in late and working. And I got a phone call and he's like, you know, Lee passed away. I didn't get to say goodbye. I didn't get to... There's a lot of things that was undone. That's my boy right there. You know, and I keep pushing hard because when I see him, I want him to... At least I did okay, you know? At least I tried, I don't know. Just doing my best. When he first started, he went into the park. I really don't think he knew exactly what to do and how it was gonna turn out. He just went in memory of that he went out there in the park. He had himself, God, he says, um, his Bible and some Tic Tacs. He said he would just like walk around and try to talk to people. After the third month, I stopped in the middle of the park. And I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? I said, what do you want me to do? He said, just help them, share with them, show them the way, help them see the way. I said, I could do that. And that's what, I, that's what I've been trying to do ever since, is that I started feeding his people. And so my reason for going down to the park at first was to see, like, what are you doing out here? I know you're mourning the loss of your brother. This is tough. It's okay. But when you're taken from our household and we're low on funds. My wife, it was, she didn't, she wasn't on board at first. Not because she didn't want to, but it's just that she knew that we couldn't afford it. She's like, how are we feeding the homeless and giving all we have? And we're going to be homeless ourselves here in a minute if we don't get ours, you know, be careful. And I remember that he pulls up in the park, I sit in the truck, and he goes out, he has coffee, and he has some donuts. And he walks around this park, and it's January, so it's, there's snow on the ground. And then he goes from each person that's laying there or standing there, and he's talking to them. So I get out of the truck and I see him. At that point, he's sitting on the ground. There's this lady covered, and she had a cardboard box over her, some plastic and a blanket. 
And so then he takes it off, cleans the snow off, and he sits on the ground in his suit and he lifts her head up and he gives her coffee. And I think I had my gloves on, I gave her my gloves and and then my, I looked up, my wife was standing there and she was just like, you could see the, so you could see the tears in her eyes, but she was just, you know, standing there. And at that point, like, God, instantly the Holy Spirit was like, what is wrong with you? Like, look at this man and what's happening. Like, I would say instantaneously, my heart just like flipped over. We believe that we should take care of everybody. That's, that's my belief. God just instantly said, like, trust me. And I'm taking care of these people and look what he's doing. And the doors just opened up. I'm not kidding. So this is how I end up in Pioneer Park, helping him and being a part of the whole thing. I just watched him. I see it. I see this face a lot. There was a lot of men that came through there and that was like, that's my brother. I need to remind me of something of you. It kind of strengthens me. It kind of gave me a little strength and just let me know that, hey, he's still around and we're going to keep doing what we need to do. And it hasn't been easy, but it's been good. We used to, we were in the park almost like nine years. And uh, that was a different animal than this. In the beginning, we didn't realize that some of the helpers that we had coming in here, we didn't realize that we were helping them in a way. I was raised by a single mom and uh, there were six of us, so she raised us. We never really went without food, but uh, we didn't have a lot. Pretty tender spot for an old jarhead. You know, so that, that's why I do it, because, uh, not, not only that, my mom taught us charity because we didn't have much, but she always had extra milk or bread. Or I'll have you guys saran wrap these as well. I am the kitchen coordinator. I got my own blue apron that says kitchen coordinator. I'm official. Good, you guys good back here? I've been there with them since day one. <laughs> um, when I was younger, I didn't have a choice. <laughs> they were like, let's go early in the morning. So we're gonna need all of these cut. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, in the beginning, it was hard for me. Um, I was very uncomfortable. It took me years to get past why don't they go work? And I'm like, but why does it matter? You're not here to decide if they go to work or not. You're just here to be able to smile, to let them know that they matter and that you care about them and to send them on their way and be there the next Sunday if they need you. We're here to support them no matter what their situation is. Well, see how great your air cracking skills are. We cook and make 99% of the food in the back on the grill or in the front on the, on the counter. So the volunteers come to the door and they are part of that. They help cook, they help clean, they help prep, they help tear down, they help serve. Perfect, do you want any soup? There's like, it's like a bean soup. And you have so many volunteers from so many different backgrounds. We are decorating fill the pot because we love it to be so inviting for the homeless as they come on Sunday to get their food. And I didn't even know this place existed till two years ago. I thought, where have I been? Where have I been? I bring a couple friends and we climb up these ladders and we put up different decorations and it just is fun for us. My first exposure was a Sunday morning shopping trip at Winco with my wife. And as we're checking out, there's a young lady that comes in behind us and she's got all the hamburger buns and hot dog buns that she can carry. I had about 30 packs of hot dog buns in my cart and I'm loading them on the counter and John goes, Okay, where's the barbecue and can we come? Well, I'm going to fill the pot ministry and we need this bread. The expression and the smile and enthusiasm that this young lady had carrying all those hamburger and hot dog buns was, yeah, I mean, it was infectious. He goes, no, I'm buying that today for you. And so he purchased all the bread on the counter for me, didn't even ask me the price. We went down and see what the organization was about and what they were doing and uh, well, been involved ever since. I'm glad you came down to get something to eat. We have um, all kinds of faith down there, Jewish, um, Muslim, traditional Catholic, traditional Baptist, traditional LDS, and you know, it's, it's about doing for others, you know, that the golden rule. I don't think people understand how beautiful multiple faiths are and how we work together. And we have the same goal, just to help and give back and change lives. And that's, that is wonderful. So we offer so much more service than food, I think so. We offer opportunities for everyone to be involved in the community. Good morning, how are you? I see people that don't necessarily know why they're there or they're coming there because their group is there. They leave different. They leave changed and the biggest thing that's changed is their compassion for, for humanity. How are you guys doing today? I was pretty comfortable 
you know, with homeless people. I had been kind of homeless myself at several times. Where, where are you from? Illinois. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was right there, so close to being in that situation um, with pending charges and, and a, a strong, strong addiction. I'm good, how are you? Every single week I get to renew, renew my strength in my sobriety and my service-minded attitude. And now it's just translated into my whole life. Junior, my man! Challenging as it is, I would probably, yeah, I probably wouldn't be around. I'd probably be dead. Well, you made my day brighter today coming You're in. You're welcome. You made me light up. <laughs> You're wonderful. Thank you. I love you. Love you too. Bye, Anna Rosa. We can make a change in life, in this life, if we just focus on who we are and where we try to go. We make food on Saturday nights or first thing Sunday mornings and take it down to them. And I absolutely love taking a part of our family to them. You know, and our kids can serve it right there and say, these are my mom's baked beans. And, you know, this is what our family loves. And they're, it's just fun. That's one of my favorite parts is taking something from home to them. And you didn't know that baked beans could go with French toast. You know, but it can. <laughs> because the food line is, is a combination of breakfast foods, lunch, desserts, you name it. Whatever's donated is what, what's on the menu. And it changes every week. <laughs> What about this one? This one's a bit bigger. I usually serve with that Tony in the clothing department. One. It's fun to watch them get excited about some new pair of pants or get a new pair of shoes and they just put them right up. Cause some of them come in barefoot. You're happy with those. Okay, perfect. All right, you're welcome. Have a great day. Have a good day. What is our motto out here? Anybody know? Um, I think it's best with, with uh, Ribbon Ragsdale's motto. He always would say every time at the beginning with the prayer, he'd say, you know the motto? And everybody say the motto is one, one person helps another person, helps another person, helps another person, and the world will be a better place. This world will be in a lot better shape. Amen. And that is true, and that's what it's about. And I remember one of the most humbling experiences I ever had with an interaction with one of the people. I remember just standing there. I looked down at a gentleman, and his shoes were untied. And I thought, do I have the guts to tie his shoes and bend down? He was so dirty. And I bent down and tied those shoes. And I remember thinking, this is what the Lord does for me daily. And we forget that everybody is a son and daughter of God. And that's what Tony and Reverend Ragstell teach us, is it doesn't matter who you are, you are a child of God. Let's let them know that we see them. And the greatest thing is the ones that serve, and they get to look at God's kids coming in front of them as well as the ones that's receiving the food, looks over the line and say, those are God's people. Morning, how are you? And you go down there and, and you see this eye to eye. And if that doesn't change your perspective a little bit on, on your week and the problems that you have in your life and the things you're facing, you're not paying attention. It's good to see the change in people that come in here, to see their lives changing on both sides of the line. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye. You know, the, the first experience is very eye-opening because I think as a public, our society, we see homeless people and we're like, I don't know why they don't get a job. After being involved and meeting these people, you realize that there's so much more to their story. I'm down on my luck, but I'm not giving up. I'll put it that way. I came out here a couple of years ago with my girlfriend, and unfortunately, she had a stroke. So we went from two incomes to one income, and I wound up here. And there's several individuals down there that are probably just two or three paychecks removed from when they were living in an apartment and getting paychecks and buying their own food. I, I enjoy coming down here just to see the people. So. Plus, get you out of the shelter for the day. One of the greatest things in life is that we get to wake up 
every morning. He gets a message every Sunday before the doors open up um, because it's important. It's like encouraging them. So we can open the doors and you can feed them, but people need to hear something here and plant something here. You understand when I say storm, I mean, we're just going through something. We, we having some problems in life. I tell the homeless people in here, I say, all, the, all the time, I just say, guys, hold your head up high. You belong to somebody. You know, you are a part of somebody. You belong to God. No matter where we sleep at tonight, under a bridge, wherever we at, Father God. And he'll do a prayer over them, talk about strength and peace. We just ask you to post your angels up around. It's spiritual lifting, I guess you'd say. And I was never very religious before I came down here. And every day I say prayers. And I bless the people that I know and the people that are past. And I've been coming here every Sunday. I've missed a few, but, you know, I've been, you know, it's, it's the one good meal a week I get. I'll take a little roll, yeah. This kind? When I first became homeless in that, I, uh, felt there was no God. And uh, I started coming down here and and they, they've they helped me realize that there is. And sometimes when it's not our season, sometimes we might not even hear God. We might just be kind of like wandering around in the desert. So they look forward to those messages and we need those. It's just like what we go to church for, to hear a sermon, a word of encouragement, to get our gas tank fueled up. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Very nice. Love you, man. Love you, too. He genuinely cares and loves every single person that comes in here. Love you, man. That's good stuff. He'll tell everybody, I love every one of you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Thank you all for spending your Sunday. And the, the volunteers that come down here every week, it's it's just amazing. Hold, hold, hold with me. I heard Mr. Ragsdale say one, one morning, we're all just one mistake away from being on the other side of this wall. No one's too big nor too small in which you don't need God. So I'm trying to get you guys in as many as I can. On this past Sunday, I had a gentleman that walked by me, and as he walked by me, he just broke out in tears. He didn't know where he was gonna get his next meal from, and he just saying, kept saying, thank you, God, thank you, God. So what we can look at it as just being food and clothing for some. Some is much more than that. All right, brother, you got it. I've never seen people that have so less be so humble, be so happy. Oh man, that looks really good. And that's what keeps me coming back. How are you today? I get the opportunity to Not talk good, huh? face to face to everybody that comes through that line on a Sunday when I'm in that position, which is amazing. You know, most of these people are just hungry and want a, want a good meal. And you know, they, they deserve it, they're human. They're all God's children. They're all one of us, and you know, and they deserve respect too. A lot of them have sickness, mental illness that they may never change. So, but they deserve to be treated like human beings and stuff. So, but then if you stop and you look at the bigger picture and who we're supposed to be in Christ, you truly understand we're more like and we are different. I'm Ray. Ray. You don't have to be religious to feel that feeling that overcomes you when you help somebody and you give to them and you see the expression in their face and you see their eyes light up and you see the smile. When they come in filthy and dirty and they get and hungry and they leave with a blanket and, and toiletries and a coat and a hat and a full belly, you know, it's something, you know, it's not everything. It takes a lot to change. You know, without people like the Rev and the other volunteers down here, you know, what would we do? You want to know what God looks like and feels like? In this room right now, this is what God looks like. This is what it feels like. This is how we're supposed to serve and represent God and be ambassadors in His name. I think the secret sauce is, is the Rev and Miss Tony. I mean, when you meet them, you're immediately taken by how charismatic they are, right? How passionate they are. We can give people a hundred pair of shoes, but if you don't have no love in your heart, it really didn't mean much. These are people that have full-time jobs, and they're also running this. And so when you go down there and you learn about that, it kind of blows you away that it's like, man, these people are sacrificing so much more than I am. And it makes you want to contribute 
and to give back. So I think it's, you know, the Rev and Miss Tony and their faith that the pot will never go empty. Every morning you get up, you can change your life, man. That Marine, that former Marine is, is a gracious, good man with the heart of a warrior. Brent's a trooper. And, and Tony's no different. They're just exceptionally good people that are just bound and determined to do good because they know it's the right thing to do. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? I think we all want to be out there and serving. Tom, you're up. Turn, 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 Tom. Oh, uh, hi there. <laughs> I mean, nobody needs to be doing this massive project. Nobody is as ma as amazing as Tony and Rev. Like, this has been years in the making. This didn't start out like this. This has been years in the making. All right, so let's, let me take all the kids first and I'll come back and get the adults, okay? The younger people are my favorite because I want you guys to know that this is your community. This is you, this belongs to you. Uh, and service, like everything else, is a, maybe a little bit learned. And so if, as parents, we're teaching our children that that's important to us, then you know maybe they'll pick it up earlier than we did. Do you want a honey bun or a pastry? Reach out. Okay. You know, there's people in need. It doesn't even have to be to fill the pot. I'm sure you can look around your family and see people that are in need and uh, just give back. Charity and service is a lifetime duty. It's not like one month or one year or five years. Hey man, that hair getting long. It's about learning each other. It's about loving each other. That's it, bro. And like the rep said, one person helps one person helps one person. This world would be a better place. Through this whole experience over the years, I've learned, to be honest with you, is to trust God. This couldn't be possible. It couldn't be possible without God. And I think because we stand on that, and that's the foundation that we've always had with Philippa, I think that's what makes us continue to grow. You know, and I don't leave this place without getting on my knees and thanking God for just showing me the right way, you know, just giving me the right words to say. And I thank him, and then I go on about my business, and I, like, give old brother upstairs a thumbs up, and we're good. <laughs>